All right, welcome back to a new Touch Designer tutorial. And in this one, we're going to look at how to reveal an image like this. So this is actually sort of a revival or like a new approach, new version of a very old tutorial of mine. So the, the third one I did. So here we basically have a very similar thing and we, it's, the, the technique is pretty similar as well. But uh, the the outcome looks pretty different. And I think like... I mean, it's kind of a cool effect with this edge. It's kind of overused as well, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I want this to be wanted this to be clean, and also I wanted to not use the particle stop or anything. So this is really a lot more simple, and I feel like there is a lot more control and things you can you can do, and it's just the outcome is much cleaner. So yeah, I'm just gonna start and dive into it. So as usual, we'll delete everything uh, except for the image today. I'll leave that in here. So this is a texture I created in Midjourney. So this is basically an AI created texture. And no, I'm not going to share my prompt. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm just going to add a fit to this. And change the resolution to 1280 by 1280. And change the fit to fit outside. Then I'm going to add an HSV adjust to this. Move that a bit over here and go get rid of the saturation. So we just have a black and white image. And I'm going to add a level to this and go up with the gamma to like three. All right. So this is basically preparing, like this part is for preparing the texture for the feedback loop. And we're going to get to that in a second. So I'm going to add a point now that we start from, right? We just want to, we have a, we want to have a sort of defined point where we can start the revealing effect from. So I'm going to change this to set resolution only to get rid of the background and change my radius to like 0 0.04. We're going to add some more stuff here, but for now I'm just going to add a now. And I'm also going to add a feedback now. I'm just going to add the now like here. Maybe push this down a bit. Okay, so let's add a feedback top. Let's also add a keyboard in shop as well as a null to this called reset and let's just use this on the reset button here so i can just reset my feedback by pressing one as usual and now i'm going to add a composite here because we want to pipe in our texture here into the network into the feedback loop so i'm going to grab my level and put that into the comp we can leave this operation as multiply <laughs> And then I'm going to add an edge. It's kind of the most important top here. And we're going to look at that in a second. I'm also going to add a composite, another one, to round off the, the feedback loop, add this as a second input, and change this to over. Now I'm going to add a, oops, add a null to this, call it BG, display in the background, and drag my comp back onto the feedback and hit play. So we can already see the effect is sort of working, right? We're already growing from the center. So, so that's great. And for that to work, basically the white parts of the image or the bright parts of the image always have to overlap with our input circle or the starting circle. We're going to change that circle as well, but yeah. All right. So this looks kind of, I mean, we can see where it's going, but it doesn't look good. So. On our edge, what we can do is uh, turn on comp over input. So that's really going to make a difference. I'm going to change the strength to two. And uh, yeah, you can kind of just play around with this and see what makes a difference. But we're going to like combine this with the original texture. It's going to look very different anyways. I'm going to also change this sample step to 2.4, 2.4. These are always like values you can play with. And uh, yeah, that's already looking a bit better. So I'm um, just going to quickly turn this off. I'm going to add a select top here. And I'm just going to drag my fit from over here onto it. So yeah, where we're getting the original colored image. And I'm going to use a composite here to composite that original image with the color with our feedback output. I'm going to change the operation here to minimum and just display that in the background again. So now if I hit one again, we can already see this effect is working pretty nicely. So first off, there's like alpha in the background. So we might want to get rid of that by adding a transform. 
changing alpha to one and then turning comp over background color on. All right, so this is already looking like something. So one thing you might notice is that there's the slide, there's these sort of artifacts from the edge, from the movement here that we can see very slightly here. To get rid of that, we can add a level after a comp and just go up with the gamma to like three. And now you can kind of see, maybe you can't see that that well on, on YouTube, but you will notice it really makes a difference. It's much cleaner if you just go up with the gamma here. Cool. So I'm gonna push this a bit over here and we're gonna add some more things in here because right now you can see every time the effect looks the same and it's kind of, it's just right, these, these sort of circular edges. It's not very interesting. So to make it more interesting, let's edit this place. Go down with the displace weight to like 0 0.01 on both axes. And with the middle mouse, I'm going to add a noise here and change a few things about it. So on my output, I'm going to change it to just noise. I'm going to animate it. ABS time dot seconds times 0 0.03. It's a very subtle animation. I'm going to turn that off for now. I'm going to look at that later. I'm going to change a lot of things here. So first off, period to like 1.2, harmonics and harmonic spread to like three, and harmonic gain to like 0.95. Should look something like that. We can go down for amplitude and turn monochrome off. Generally, always when you're working with displays and noise, I would always recommend turning monochrome off. It just makes, just works a lot better because it sort of goes in all direction. Like it, this places in all directions and not just like diagon diagonally. Okay, so let's just hit one again. And now you can already see it's sort of, there's the, all, these, all of this noise in there. <laughs> so if we turn this off, you can see again, the sort of circular effect. And if I turn this on, we have to get this like fizzling in the, on the edges. And obviously you can change this noise in any way you like. So I'm just gonna, select this level noise and edge and press C to give this a, a color because these are the, the main ones you're gonna be playing with. Cool, so that is working nicely. We can, as I, as I just prepared, we can turn on the animation for the noise and it's just gonna be a bit more dynamic even. But I don't think it's, it's necessarily, like, necessary. <laughs> it's not necessarily necessary, yeah. Right, so let, let me have a look here at the, the input. So right now we just have a circle in the very center, so it's not super interesting. So first thing we can do obviously is we can place that somewhere else. So here we have to sort of trunk or like the, the root starting here, right? In the center more or less. So we might wanna have the revealing effect starting there as well. So I'm gonna just move this down to here, maybe a bit to the left. Now if I press one, you can see it starts from all the way down there. And that for this image, that makes a lot more sense. It's really growing from, from wherever the image sort of is, right? It just makes sense to place it there. But then we might also want to add like a second point or more. So we can just add another circle here. Maybe I'm going to make this even smaller, 0 0.02. And let's just move that like a bit maybe to the left and then like up. Now if I press one again, you can see it starts both there and there and then it kind of fuses. So obviously you could just add more circles to have more starting points. And uh, again, we right now we just have like, they really look like circles. I mean, it's looking pretty good because we have this displacement here, but if we didn't have this displacement, it's it really just, you can see it's a circle that we're starting from. So we might just want to do something very similar as here. So just adding a displace gonna go down to like 0.1 both axes and add a noise again and this noise again turn off monochrome make sure you just have the noise so we're just connecting it for the resolution basically all right put that in here and um, now we can change a few things about it so first off we might want to go down to period might want to go down with the harmonic gain and also the amplitude like maybe 0.1 so now it looks more like like shapes and less like, it's kind of hard to see, but like, yeah, it looks more like shapes and, and less like circles. So um, 
One thing we can also do here is add a count to our keyboard in. And I usually change this limit to loop min max and set it to like 9999. Um, just, I don't know, it just feels better to have it limited. And add a null. Let's call this seed and just use it for that seed. So every time we press one now, we're starting, like we're creating a different displacement as you can see here. And we could even use the same seed on our noise here. So we also have a different sort of fizzly fuzzing effect. I don't know what to call it. A different kind of noise revealing effect. So yeah. Right. So you could even think about creating something like an instancing network here with circles to make it like a different, different starting points every time. Or you could use a similar technique as here with the pattern shop maybe to create like different points. Um, and obviously you can use any shape. You could also for this, it might even make sense to make it like a bit wider than it is high. You know, just feel free to, to mess around with that. Also with the level here, like wh whatever works best for you. Mess around with it. And you can use any texture here. So I noticed it's, it's best to have kind of a black background. It looks really nice. Um, or like high contrast and also I like fine details, I, I feel like work best. So yeah, I think that's it for the for this video. And thank you so much for like everybody who's supporting me on Patreon. If you want to join, follow the link in the description. And I'll see you on the next video.